The ocean doesn't care if you believe in climate change. The ocean is gonna get warmer no matter what you believe. I was in my office just sort of like doing my work one day and across the hall, Dan Lambert, who is our videographer, uh, producer, director of all of our videos, came running across and he said, Sarah, come into my office, I wanna show you something. And I said, okay, so I go in and he plays this trailer that he has made for a film that doesn't exist about climate change in the Gulf of Maine. My biggest fear is really that this issue might be even bigger than we realize at this point. And I was like, what is this? And he's like, we need to make a documentary. When Sarah DeLage left the world of news almost five years ago and joined the marketing staff of the University of New England, she knew she still wanted to help tell stories most come through press releases, but this documentary was a chance to let the research speak for itself. She quickly pulled in UNE colleague and former New Center Maine journalist, Chris Rose. I thought we've got the experts here, each person uh, who's doing research, the professors, scientists, um, they've got a different kind of niche angle in climate change. We really didn't want it to be just a UNE promotional film, so we decided to bring some people in from the outside. So uh, Rick Wally was gracious enough to take part. He's one of the leading experts on lobsters in the state of Maine with the University of Maine Lobster Institute. We got Peter Slovinsky, who's with the Maine and U.S. Geological Survey. He's an expert on sea level rise and flooding. And we got Dan Chadbourne, who's kind of like an old salt, regular guy, lobsterman. There's less. There's almost half of what we used to catch. We told a story that I couldn't as a scientist do, and I don't think the documentary makers could have by themselves. Dr. Charles Tilburg has been studying climate change since the 90s, and as science evolves, so does the urgency to get the information out to the public. But what's more important, at least to me as a scientist, is it is warming faster than 99% of all of the oceans in the world. That's going to affect lobsters. This That's going to allow for, you know, for crabs to come in and invade this area. That's going to move uh, you know, all the different types of populations that are in the water, and that's going to affect everyone's, uh, you know, economic well-being. This was my chance to actually communicate that, you know, to, to tell the people of Maine that this is going to affect you. And yes, one or two degrees, those numbers don't mean very much, but no more lobsters, more green crabs, no more ground fish. Those are things that people care about, and that's what's going to happen over the next 20 to 30 years. They have the scientists, the research, the videographers, the journalists. We lined up all of the interviews, and Sarah and I uh, conducted them all over a period of several months. Uh, we did a lot of it last summer. But who would be the voice to strike the right tone that, yes, this is a problem for Maine, but there is hope. And I always heard a woman's voice, and I was like, I could do it, and I did it initially just to kind of help with the editing process, but I just kept saying, like, something is missing, and then all of a sudden it came to me, and I thought, it's Susan. It has to be Susan Kimball. A changing climate will mean changes for all of us. This afternoon, crew members of the Kit Kat are back at work. Another right, former July, News Center main journalist chooses, joining the ranks of documentary rack. filmmaker. Obviously, it speaks well to the university and the expertise and the kind of faculty you're going to learn from if you go to school here, but there's also a responsibility there, right, as an educational institution with all of this expertise to take a stand on something and say, this is a huge, huge problem that is not going away, and if we don't do something about it, what kind of a world are we leaving for people? Which is why UNE is making the documentary available to high schools and colleges in Maine, hoping to inspire some change in those inheriting the planet. COVID-19 has hit. For a while, no one was driving. The tra transportation had gone way down. You know, lots of the things that we think of in terms of carbon emissions had decreased. But we were still emitting enough carbon into the atmosphere that the, uh, it was getting warmer and warmer. In fact, 2020 is predicted to be the warmest year on record, even though we've driven less, because it's not individual choices. We can't just as, you know, you and I can't decide we're going to do these things and that's going to affect climate change. We as a society need to do it. I got to think that, that, you know, a new dawn is beginning. Everybody that we talk to, the professors, the scientists who work with young people, 
said, I do hold out hope that this generation, they're the most connected, they're the most involved that we've seen in years, and they are going to figure this out with the help of us. But I am hopeful that humans will address this and that life will get better.